everyone, this is Dylan again from Dylan's Reptile Time. Hope you're all doing okay. Uh, so in this video, we're gonna have a closer look at these Royal Pythons. So this is William. Uh, you might recognize Royal Pythons. They're really popular pet snakes. So you might see them in pet shops, in zoos. You might see them on TV. Um, you may even have one yourself, I don't know. Now in the wild, Royal Pythons come from West and Central Africa and they're found in the grasslands and the shrubland over there. And they're called royal pythons because apparently the ancient tribal leaders in Africa used to wear them as jewellery, like round their neck, just walk around with them. Imagine that. So I don't know if that's true or not, but apparently that's where the royal part of their name comes from. They're also called ball pythons. So when they're called that because when they're scared and they want to protect themselves, they curl up into a really tight ball like a football and just hide their head, protect their head. And although they're pythons, they're quite a small python. Uh, some pythons get huge, uh, royal pythons like William here, he'll get to about, you know, between three and five feet in length. Now William, he's obviously a male royal python. Females get a little bit longer, a little bit chunkier than the males. And pythons like William, they, they're ambush predators. So they'll kind of wait for their prey, they'll catch their prey. They're not venomous, they kill by constriction. So they'll wrap their body around the animal really tightly, squeeze all the air out, and when they're pretty sure the animal's dead, they'll swallow it whole. And they eat a thing, uh, they eat a mixture of like small mammals, like rodents, like uh, mice and rats, and also birds as well. And they're mostly, mainly nocturnal in the wild, which means that they'll go out at night time looking for their prey and having a roam around. During the day, they'll spend it down uh, uh, animal burrows like rabbit holes and things like that. Now, I don't know if you can see this. Let's have a closer look around uh, William's head. They've got these little holes uh, on their top lip and they're heat sensitive pits so they can see the body heat of another animal. Uh, and when it's close enough, they'll strike. Now that comes in really handy when they're hunting their prey at nighttime and when they're down these dark rabbit holes as well. And as well as using those heat sensitive pits, like all snakes, their main sense is their, their tongue. They see them sticking their tongue out there where he was a second ago. And that's how they, uh, they kind of smell their prey. They taste the air with their tongue. Now, although they're a great predator, uh, they, it doesn't mean they're not prey themselves. So they do get preyed upon by um, uh, carnivorous mammals, birds of prey, other large reptiles like large snakes and uh, your monitor lizards as well. And did you know with pythons, they have these little claws at the end of their tail. I don't know if you can see that if it zooms in. Look at these little claws. And what they are, they're, they're kind of the leftovers of uh, legs. So snakes evolved from lizards and with pythons and boas, those little claws have just kind of stayed around. They're the remnants of their, their back legs. It's a bit weird, isn't it? Now, uh, they, like a lot of uh, snakes, they lay eggs. So this one can lay up to about 10 eggs, or not this one, the boy, but the females can lay up to about 10 eggs. And they, most snakes, they find a suitable place to lay their eggs and they just kind of leave them to hatch out. With a lot of pythons, including the royal python, the female uh, sometimes stays with the eggs, wraps herself around the eggs, and to prevent, prevent the eggs from getting cold, she'll kind of shiver on the eggs to, to keep, keep up the warmth uh, so that they hatch out okay. And those eggs, they'll hatch out into little baby royal pythons after about 60 days or so. And royal pythons, they can live up to about 30 years. Uh, and the, so William, he's about 15 years old, but he could live up to about 30 years. And there was even one in captivity that lived over 45 years. Uh, so that's a really long time for a snake. Now, if you look at the color and the pattern of um, William here, um, that's the normal kind of pattern that you would find in the wild really uh, but royal pythons they've been bred uh, in captivity in all different kind of types of colors so you can get all different kind of patterns and colors uh, called morphs uh, of royal pythons what people would do say if uh, a royal python is born with a uh, different color say if it's like a genetic mutation like it's an albino they would breed that one with a kind of a more stripier one maybe different pattern and then that would produce kind of a, another kind of different pattern and color so and you can go on it gets you know I'm, 
I don't know how many uh, of these different morphs are out there. There's too many to keep up with, I think. Um, now, I'm not really into that kind of thing, but um, so, yeah, he's, he's pretty enough, isn't he? He's a gorgeous snake. Uh, but I must admit, when I first saw a, an albino ball python about 30 years ago, I was like, wow, look at that. That is awesome. Uh, but yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Quite happy with this one, actually, this color. Now, uh, if you are interested in, in buying a pet uh, ball python, just, just make sure you do all your research. There's loads of tons of videos out there on how best to look after uh, snakes and how to keep them. You gotta make sure you get the right size vivarium, get the lighting right and the heating right. Make sure you know what they eat uh, before you introduce your new pet to its new home. And if you get all that right, they can be really interesting and rewarding pets. Right, so I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, that was uh, William the Royal Python, and we'll be back uh, back again soon with another video. Okay, take care, guys. <laughs>